Hi everyone, David Mailer here. Today we're going to go over some enhancing of bar charts with ggplot in R. So if you look at my screen right here, we're going to end up with a graph just like this with the bar chart with all the uh, nicer stuff in it that you don't normally get default in uh, R. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So we're going to start off with first is our libraries. Today I'm going to use Cable Extra, Tidyverse, Zoo, ggplot2, Dev tools, and uh, then if you don't have any of these, you just use the install.packages, like I did here with Zoo, okay? And uh, just load them up. And then once you've got them in, once you've used install.packages, then use the library to, do, to load it in, just like these, okay? Once you've done that, today's data set I'm using is taxpayer info. Uh, this is real scrub data from the IRS, so... And it's got things like how much money they earn per year, uh, how if they filed their taxes in the previous three years, stuff like that. So we're going to look at that in just a second. So let me open this up so you can see what I'm doing here. So the first line of real code here beyond loaded packages is that you're going to use read.csv. That's what I used here because this is a CSV file, right? And header equals true and separator equals comma. Okay, it's like comma delimited. So then you just put that into a data frame, which I did here called test data one. If you look it up here, it actually has a, around a thousand observations in it. We're coming, going to show you a couple extras here too today. So what we're going to first do is we're going to take the head of that. The head is the top six rows, right, of test data one. So I want to look at that. So if I just click this right here, right, and I hit this, control and enter, give it a second here. And we got to go into our viewer. There we go. And it shows it just like this, top six rows. And it shows you you've got household income, household debt level, were they married. And it, not only is it married, it's are they married, single, married, or divorced. That's what the uh, zero, one, and two are. Um, college grads. How many college grads are there in the household? Average household age. Cars. You know, how many cars do they own in the household? Did they file in 2017, 2016, and 2015? Uh, political party. You know, so then are they a Democrat? Are they independent or are they Republican? That's what that is right there. So that's the data we're looking at. And uh, so what I've got here <clears throat> is the head goes into this data frame called DF. And then I'm using cable, which is right here from Cable Extra, DF, and I'm routing that into cable styling, bootstrap options equals striped, font size equals 10, full width equals F. So what that does, that makes it look nice and pretty like this, okay? With your rows being a little bit different colored, every other row, okay? So once you do that and you've looked at it, now this is where I'm getting a little extra here. What if I didn't want the full set? What if I wanted to remove the first or the last 250 rows? Well, this is what I would use right here the tail of test data one comma negative 250. So it's doing is saying, I'm going to take off 250, okay? And it's actually, uh, so that's test data one. And uh, so if I did the tail of six, right? If I had six here, that would give me the six units from the tail, right? Negative 250 is the opposite. It's not the first. I'm removing the last 250 rows. It's more correct here, so let's put that here. Now, if I wanted to remove the first 250, I'd put head instead of tail here, okay? But anyway, so I'm putting that in test data one, and so what that does, it ends up giving me 754 observations after that's done. Now, if I run that again, it's gonna remove another 250 rows from the end of it, which I don't wanna do right now. I'm just doing that to show you how I would go and change my data. If I wanted a smaller sample size, if I wanna split it, I could do that and I could put, you know, I could put it into two different uh, data frames or whatever I wanna do with it. So now let's look at a simple bar chart, right, with the plot function. So let's just start off with something simple. Very simple. Use this parameter, MF row equals C1, comma 1 to do one graph here, right? And then plot of political party and uh, test in the data is from uh, test data one, which is what we just brought in, right? So let's do that. And there it is. That's not a very pretty looking uh, bar chart there. It's not got a title, it's not got all the uh, sides, the X and the Y labeled correctly, it's not got a legend or anything like that. It's not really that, that functional. Now, if I use ggplot, I can do the same thing right here, 
ggplot, test data one, at AES is aesthetics, that's what it stands for, and all I'm using there is X equals political party, just like here, and fill by political party, right? So if I do this, what do I get? Run G2. Pretty ugly stuff, not very good, okay? So instead, let's make this something better, right? So let's go down here. And oh, one more thing, if it had NA values in it, NA is not uh, available or something like that. They're just not there. You can use this right here to get rid of them. You could set limits to, you know, so if I've got one, I could just set it equal to, if a Democrat had NA values in it, we could set it to equal just independent Republican. Pardon, don't pardon, or, uh, pardon my uh, allergies today. Um, so next, let's go and make it a little bit more complex and nice. So what we're going to do is a little bit longer here. We're going to add ggplot, test data one, aesthetics, x equals political party, fill equals political party, but plus geom bar, see right there, stat equals count. So we're going to do it by count. Theme minimal plus gg title, political party by number of households. I don't know why we got theme minimal in there twice. That must be a mistake. So let's get rid of one of those. And uh, then we've got uh, geom text stat count aesthetics label count v just two. What's that going to do? Let me show you here. So if I just took this right here and ran that, I get this. See that? But that's not everything. I also want to have uh, see how it's got count here and political party here, but it's all one word. I want to make that a little bit nicer. So then I'm going to add political party with a space in it, right? And then I'm going to add households instead of count, because I know the count is the number of households. So I'm going to have X lab for X label and Y lab for Y label. So if we do that to this whole thing, you got to admit, there it comes back. I've got households, political party correctly. I've got most of it, but there's a couple more things I want to do here. And, uh, Let's see here. So the other thing is this uh, stat count, what this part right here does is that gives me these guys right here. Okay, the uh, numbers inside. If I took that out, I could do that by just putting a number sign right there. Okay, and getting rid of this, right? And then running this. Now what happens? See, the numbers are gone. See it right there? So it's actually helpful to have those at the top of your bars. So I'll put that, put the plus sign right here again. And let's run it again. So at this point, we've got this. There we go. It's nice. It's got the numbers exactly there. So you know exactly, you know, if you don't have those, you can see they're close, but you don't know exactly where is it from 200. Now you know exactly it's 249, 255, and 250. But what if I want to add some more? What if I want to add a caption and a subtitle, right? So I've got this. That's my title. But I want to have a subtitle underneath that better describes it. And then underneath this, underneath the whole thing, I want to have a caption there like saying this was from uh, a page in Life Magazine. Or this data was from uh, the University of California, Irving. Or this data is from the IRS. Or whatever it is I want to put in there. Right. So what we're going to do is take what we did there and then I'm going to do this labs for labels. Title equals taxpayers by political party. Then I'm going to have subtitle political party by number of households. And then I'm going to have a caption DFM incorporated in, in the date, today's date. Plus the X and Y for political party and households. The reason why I have to do that again is they'll get lost when I bring up another labs title. If I don't do this extra part in here, what happens is the one that I did here gets lost. Okay, so let's just run that all the way through just so you can see it run. Give it a second, and there it is. So now you've got the title, you've got a subtitle, see it right there, political party by number of households, right? And then you've also got this, which is the uh, caption. Okay, so I know the date that this was run, who ran it, that's my initials. And uh, I've got the legend over here. So you've got, we went through from a very simple bar chart that was super ugly, right? This one, which really isn't very helpful, 
to something that you can actually be pretty proud of, which is this guy right here. And you saw all the code to make that happen. It's all right there. And there it is. So if I open this up a little bit just to make sure you can see everything here. There we go. Everything's right there of what I need in the end to make that happen. And uh, again, it's very simple to do. A lot of little extras in here, like the cable functions, pretty cool right here to see your data in a nice, pretty way instead of just looking at it, uh, you know, viewing it over here or uh, in the console. Um, it's just nice to look at, nice to see everything laid out here in a nice fashion. Um, and then we also showed you how to remove the last 250 rows. And then again, we ended up with this cool graph in the end that has uh, everything you could want it for a bar chart. And let's go back to plots, and there it is. We can make it a little bigger for you if you want to see it bigger. Uh, let's do that. There we go. And that's what you end up with there. Bam. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. It gives you every piece that you need to make these cool bar charts like this with the colors showing the way they are with the legends and the uh, caption and the subtitle and all of that. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And make sure you click that bell so you get notified every time I have a cool video like this for you to learn from. Uh, thank again, thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And leave me a comment. And let me know what you think, what you'd like to see in the next videos I have coming out. Um, let me know how data science and data analytics is going for you. Thanks again and have a great day.